So what we will do in this session, what you will do in this session is an activity where you will evaluate two papers. The goal of the activity is that two papers A and B will be given. They are on similar topics and the broad goal of the activity is to critically analyze and evaluate the two papers. So this is the broad goal. So let's see how to do it. Firstly, you need to form groups of two. So you can just turn to your neighbor right now, pick a partner and shake hands with them, introduce yourself to them if you don't know who they are. Take a minute to do it, find a partner. And with your partner, you'll be writing the answers to the questions in the worksheet. You can write the answers in your notebook. There is no submission here right now, but I will be asking a lot of questions from each of the remote centers. So please answer each of the questions enthusiastically and sincerely. Where to find these files? So there are two options for you. These files have been uploaded on Moodle and an email was sent to all the RC coordinators. So one possibility is that you can open the files on a PC or on your laptop. They're available on Moodle. The second option is that in some RCs, printouts are available. So if you have a printout of the worksheet, you need three files. You need paper A, you need paper B, and you need the worksheet. So let me just read out the instructions and then I'll let you figure out how to actually open these files. First, you need to read paper A. Each paper is six pages long. Paper A is the one on effectiveness of learning simulations of electronics labs. The file name is paper A.pdf if you if you're opening it on the PC. And paper B is innovative lab experiences for introductory electrical engineering students. First read paper A, then answer parts of question one related to paper A. So I'll show you what I mean by this. This is just the first part of the worksheet. You will see a table. There is an item in the table. Uh, in the table, you will have to answer a yes or a no. And there are about 10 such items in question 1. Similarly, there's questions 2, 3 and 4 where again you have to analyze the papers and the worksheet tells you precisely what to do with the paper. So first read paper A and answer all questions related to paper A. Then read paper B and answer all parts of question related to paper B. In order to answer the question, you and your neighbor can discuss, you and your partner can discuss the answers and write it in a notebook. So there's discuss, this is a pair activity. Once you've finished entire question one, where you're comparing the two papers in terms of about 10 features, you need to go to question two. And in question two, the, again, there are three parts you must at least try to finish question two till the end of the activity. We'll spend about 45 minutes on this activity. You may need more time because it will take you about 15 minutes or so to read the paper. You can't simply skim through the paper. You have to really read it. The reason you have to read it carefully is if you look at question one, it says locate the following items in the paper. When you find the required item, Circle it and make notes on a paper, on the paper itself if you have printouts or if you have, uh, if you are doing it on a PC, you can locate it on the PDF file on the screen and write it in your notebooks where which section, which page number, which paragraph did you find this item. So the items, are, some of the items are not easily, uh, you can't easily find them. So you really have to read it line by line and paragraph by paragraph in order to locate these items. So read the paper, look at the items, locate them, write them, fill out the table and the worksheet as a pair. And uh, we'll, we'll get back, we'll assemble again here at 2.45, assemble again in the sense, we'll start interacting again at 2.45. In the meantime, you have to do this activity and we can actually see what you're doing. So please take this time to fill out the worksheet and do the activity. Okay, so what we'll do in this session, what you will do in this session is an activity where you will evaluate two papers. The goal of the activity is that two papers A and B will be given. They are on similar topics and the broad goal of the activity is to critically analyze and evaluate the two papers. So this is the broad goal. So let's see how to do it. 
first thing you need to form groups of two. So you can just turn to your neighbor right now, pick a partner and shake hands with them, introduce yourself to them if you don't know who they are. Take a minute to do it, find a partner. And with your partner, you'll be writing the answers to the questions in the worksheet. You can write the answers in your notebook. There is no submission here right now, but I will be asking a lot of questions from each of the remote centers. So please answer each of the questions enthusiastically and sincerely. Where to find these files? So there are two options for you. These files have been uploaded on Moodle and an email was sent to all the RC coordinators. So one possibility is that you can open the files on a PC or on your laptop, they're available on Moodle. The second option is that in some RCs, printouts are available. So if you have a printout of the worksheet, you need three files. You need paper A, you need paper B, and you need the worksheet. So let me just read out the instructions and then I'll let you figure out how to actually open these files. First, you need to read paper A. Each paper is six pages long. Paper A is the one on effectiveness of learning simulations of electronics labs. The file name is paper A.pdf if you if you're opening it on the PC. And paper B is innovative lab experiences for introductory electrical engineering students. First read paper A, then answer parts of question one related to paper A. So I'll show you what I mean by this. This is just the first part of the worksheet. You will see a table. There is an item in the table. Uh, in the table, you will have to answer a yes or a no. And there are about 10 such items in question 1. Similarly, there's questions 2, 3 and 4 where again you have to analyze the papers and the worksheet tells you precisely what to do with the paper. So first read paper A and answer all questions related to paper A. Then read paper B and answer all parts of question related to paper B. In order to answer the question, you and your neighbor can discuss, you and your partner can discuss the answers and write it in a notebook. So there's discuss, this is a pair activity. Once you've finished entire question one, where you're comparing the two papers in terms of about 10 features, you need to go to question two. And in question two, the, again, there are three parts you must at least try to finish question two till the end of the activity. We'll spend about 45 minutes on this activity. You may need more time because it will take you about 15 minutes or so to read the paper. You can't simply skim through the paper. You have to really read it. The reason you have to read it carefully is if you look at question one, it says locate the following items in the paper. When you find the required item, Circle it and make notes on a paper, on the paper itself if you have printouts or if you have, uh, if you're doing it on a PC, you can locate it on the PDF file on the screen and write it in your notebooks where which section, which page number, which paragraph did you find this item. So the items, are, some of the items are not easily, uh, you can't easily find them. So you really have to read it line by line and paragraph by paragraph in order to locate these items. So read the paper, look at the items, locate them, write them, fill out the table and the worksheet as a pair. And uh, we'll, we'll get back, we'll assemble again here at 2.45, assemble again in the sense, we'll start interacting again at 2.45. In the meantime, you have to do this activity and we can actually see what you're doing. So please take this time to fill out the worksheet and do the activity. Okay, uh, let's begin our session again. I hope all of you have got a chance to go through the papers and uh, do the worksheet, read the papers and so on. If you are still in the computer lab, please make sure that everybody is back where if you can be seen. What we'll do in this session is a continuation of the analysis of paper activity. We'll go through the worksheet, some of the questions of the worksheet and also see how to locate, what to look for in a paper when you're trying to critically evaluate it. All right, let's begin with what, just summarizing what the activity was about. You had two papers, 
A was about the effectiveness of learning simulations through uh, for electronic labs and B was a similar paper. It was about inno innovative lab experiences is what they call. The, there was a lot of lab related material in the paper for introductory electrical engineering students. So, before we look at the worksheet uh, solutions, worksheet answers, let us just reflect for a moment on what was the learning objective of this activity as in why did you, what did you learn by doing this activity or what was our objective in assigning this question for you as a, an activity. And the, what we would like you to be able to do after doing this activity are three things. One is you learned how to critically read a paper and in order to critically read there is a lot of analysis of the paper that was required and you use that to also compare papers. The way you did it is by looking at the features in the table in question 1 and asking questions which were there in questions 2 A, B, C, question 3 and so on. So, the point I am trying to make here is that whenever you are you need to read a paper for example, for your lit survey section in your own research study or if you want to analyze a paper and try to evaluate whether it is a strong paper or weak paper, you can go back to these features and these questions. So, use the worksheet as a template to be able to analyze a paper or to compare papers. Let us say you are refereeing a paper and you are uh, you have to review a paper for a conference and you have to decide whether to accept it or not. You can use similar features because this is exactly the checklist that referees get on uh, how to evaluate a paper. So, let us move on to the actual papers right now, actual questions from the worksheet. These are related, these items are related to the problem and I have picked out three rows. I believe these are the first three rows or the first two rows and one from the bottom. All are about whether the problem, uh, what problem is being addressed by the paper, whether the importance of the solution is located somewhere in the paper and whether specific research questions or objectives are present in the paper or not. So, if you recall you had to try to identify the location of each of these items, you have to pick out whether the papers contain these items or not. So, here is a table summary that each of these items was present in paper A, this is the one about electronics lab simulations and where they were present is also given and you, we see that these items are only partially present in paper B. So, what you can do at this time is take your filled out worksheets and do a self assessment. We will also look at reasons why we have put yeses and noes here. You also had your reasons when you discussed with your partner. So, use those reasons and the worksheet that you filled up to do a self assessment. So, let us go through each row one by one. In a paper that we call as a strong paper or the features in a desire, the desirable features in a strong paper, we saw this earlier that the problem being addressed has to be there up front. It has to be very clear which teaching learning issue is being addressed in the research study, what problem the authors are trying to solve and so on. So, if you look at paper A, the very first sentence in the abstract right below the title says that the work investigates the efficacy of software simulations of electronic circuit labs to support EE students. So, they set the stage right away and if you just look a little later in section 2, they repeat this in a slightly more detailed and precise manner. They say that the studies reported here investigate the extent to which lab simulations may replace electronic physical labs. So, the reader knows what the researchers have done and they also know what to expect in the rest of the parts of the paper. So, this, this is one of the starting points when you start thinking of a research study and that is what is the problem that is being addressed. Paper A does that quite clearly, paper B does it to some extent. Let us look at the next point. Fairly early on the researchers have to establish why the problem is important. And if you look at paper A in the introduction section there was a sentence which says that which talks about the benefits of electronic simulations. What are the benefits to students, what are the benefits in terms of cost and in terms of scheduling and so on. So, why are you trying to solve the problem that you have described is another point that you have to describe quite soon and in detail. 
The third point about problems is that after stating the broad problem, at some point you have to state the specific research objectives, preferably in the form of questions, because then they become very easy to answer. Again in paper A, if you look at section 4, the first paragraph of section 4, the two questions are precisely stated. To what extent will subjects who use the simulations with physical labs improve their performance? And a similar question. On the other hand, a weak paper might have a problem. It, it, most papers, most research studies do think of a problem, but it is not mentioned as concretely, precisely and as much in detail as we saw in the strong paper. So, a weak paper might mention a pro problem in a broad and fuzzy manner even if the authors have an intended goal in mind. What was done was mentioned in a very, it was mentioned, but the importance of the problem was not established. I think some small part of the slide seems to have gotten cut off here, but there is a sentence in paper B in the background section which tries to describe the problem. It says the pro paper describes new experiments and open ended design pro projects and it tries to make a connection to the ABIT criteria. But it is not clear why this problem is important and it is not clear what exactly is the research objective of the paper. So, to summarize, let us just go back a few slides. The three points about the problem have to be present in the manner described in a strong paper. By now, I am sure all of you are have, able, uh, have guessed and even maybe before uh, while you were doing your own worksheet, you could have guessed which is a strong paper and which is not the strong paper. Okay, let us go to the, go to one more point now. If you look at the next few rows of the table, it asks whether the paper that you read had prior work, had described prior work that had been done to solve the problem. It also asks about the gaps in the prior work, whether they were, they were established or not. So again, you can look at the filled out worksheet, your filled out worksheet, compare with what is written here. I will just spend maybe a few seconds for you to look at this, but then we will look at each one in detail. Okay. In a strong paper, the related work is stated and analyzed. And what we mean by this is two points. If you look at paper A, section 2A, the, the section is called related work. Section 2 is called related work and section 2A is about the electronic simulations. The first two paragraphs of that section talk about other papers and other simulators which employ a solution approach very similar to what these, this paper has done. So, here the authors are talking about prior work that is related to the type of solution that they have implemented. If you go on to section 2b, it is called learning issues. The researchers talk about a number of motivations and number of theoretical aspects, educational theory aspects on which the simulations are based. So, they talk about uh, wh why or what are the features in their simulators which are based on different learning theories. That is also considered as related work. Moreover, if we go back to the other solutions, other similar solutions, we see that section 2a in paper a has a sentence which says that both circuit tutor and electronic workbench, these are the previous prior work, pre previous solutions. Both of these may reduce the cost and time of lab experiences and then they have a but. This but is very important because that is where they are trying to establish the gap. But the efficacy of these simulations compared to that of physical equipment labs is not well understood. So, they have analyzed what has been done and they have synthesized what is missing in the work that is already been done. Paper B on the other hand does not have any sentence or any section where analysis and synthesis of previous work has, uh, uh, has been uh, written about. And if you remember what we talked about in the previous session, 
we kept saying that your solution to your paper or your solution in your research study must be innovative. We emphasized that in all the examples. And at that point, there was one point that was made that one way of establishing that the solution is innovative is to describe what else has been done and see how your work compares or how it fits what all has been done so far. To bridge the gap between what's been done and what, where you are, you have to analyze what's missing in the related work. That will establish that your solution is indeed innovative and it's, it, it, it also establishes the fact that you are uh, you're trying to address the gap. So the relevance of your solution is also addressed here. Let's go on to the next point when we are comparing the papers. Okay, there were two items about in the table and these were about the solution, the description of the solution. One item talked about the outline of how the author solved the problem and the other item was about the details of implementation of the procedure. So here again, I am not sure if you were able to locate this because it is really buried deep into paper A. But if you look at section 4 in paper A, let me go to the next slide. The very first sentence in section 4, let me zoom this a little bit. Very first sentence gives an overview of all the experiments that were done. It says the two experiments were performed and experiment 1 compared something experiment 2 was something else. Before going into the details of what was done in each experiment, these two summary sentences are present. That is what we mean by broad overall solution is explained first and then the details. If you look at the next several paragraphs on that page and even on the next page, each of these topics, method, subjects, procedure and many others, each of these is described in great detail in one or more paragraphs. So a strong paper does both. It first gives a broad outline of how the authors solve the problem because people need to know what you are doing before getting into the details and then it also does the details. On the other hand, if you look at paper B, there are a lot of details. But there are two problems here. One is that all the details are related only to the development of the material. It talks in at great length about the types of labs that were developed, which circuits were used there, what components were used. But it does not make a connection to the problem that was stated initially and secondly, it does not give the overall solution. So we will come back to this point in a few minutes. What this paper B does not have is the thought process behind the solution. So why did the researchers come up with the solution? Why do they think the solution should work? Why should it address the problem? So even before, uh, before going into the details, the reader or the referee of the paper has to know why you as the person who is doing the research study came up with the solution to solve the problem. That is another way of talking about the broad outline of the paper. So the weak paper usually has this part missing. On the other hand, the strong paper, when you read a strong paper, th this process is easily visible to the reader. So when you are writing your papers, you have some idea behind why you are doing the research study and why you are implementing the specific solution that has to come out when you are talking of the solution approach. Okay, let us look at one more point that was there. Uh, there was an item which said, do the papers have the educational theories on which the solution is based? And we will talk a lot more about this both a little bit today and a lot more next week. You will have to do some assignments related to educational theories because this part might be somewhat new to faculty members in engineering and computer science and the sciences. But we will start off here. If you look at paper A, they do talk about the learning theories and the learning issues on which their solution is based, whereas this point is completely missing in paper B. We will come back to this point a few more times. Okay, so let us now come to the point about evaluation of the solution that is proposed by the authors. Again, this is a feature that we talked quite at length in the previous session when we were looking at the different examples. 
that one important feature that must be present is that the solution must show some evaluation. This and I think all of you would have immediately seen that paper A does this extensively because there are about 4 pages regarding the evaluation of the effectiveness. And I am not sure, take a moment and uh, think about if you have not done this yet, see if this was present in paper B. It's, something is written here, but if you have not read it yet, go back to the last paragraph, take a moment, read it and see if it actually, if the last paragraph in paper B indeed talks about the evaluation of the solution. Did you all find it? Little bit. Let us see what all must be present in the evaluation. Again, we will go back to paper A, which does this extensively and see how they evaluate the solution. So, in order to evaluate and defend the solution, essentially what you are trying to do here is to establish that your solution indeed works. You are trying to convince the referee and the readers that your solution is valid. So, firstly, you need to show data and results. You would have to have done some experiment. And secondly, you have to show that the results are actually solving the problem. What we mean here is that the data that you collect and analyze must be understandable and typically in scientific papers, results are in the forms of tables and graphs, tables or graphs and some explanations that go along with it. Writing long paragraphs of text is not the most optimal way, it is not the best way to explain results. You would need text, but tables and graphs are highly recommended as, uh, as methods to present results of scientific experiments. And educational and technology experiments are also scientific experiments, that is why I am using that term. So, let us just uh, zoom into this table for a moment and see what is there and let us compare what the authors write in the text right above it. And educational and technology experiments are also scientific experiments, that is why I am using that term. So, let us just uh, zoom into this table for a moment and see what is there and let us compare what the authors write in the text right above it. These are the data and what the authors say is results of the written post test indicate a significant difference in scores of the two groups after the treatment in favor of the combined group. So, what they are saying is that the combined group did better, which you can see from the numbers. So, the numbers are consistent with the text and they are supporting each other. The text you can think of as explaining the numbers in the table. So, showing results in the form of tables and graphs is highly recommended and explanations to make them more clearly understandable. This is necessary, but it is not sufficient because what you have to do after you show results in this manner is, okay. Uh, let us just for a moment compare what the weak paper does and I think again this point would be clear. A weak paper might, might have attempts to evaluate, evaluate the solution, but the evaluation is either not systematic or it is not thorough enough and so on. The sentence here is from the last paragraph of uh, paper B. They say that outcome I was easier to measure because it was less subjective. Students who received the highest scores, reference journal articles and conference papers. The students who got lower scores merely surfed the web. That is the only part written in the entire paper about evaluation. So, as the reader you do not know what, what experiment was done, you do not know how they got these results, there is no numerical results present and so on. So, even though there seems to be some attempt at an evaluation, this is not sufficient for a strong research paper. The second part about the results is that they should connect back to the research questions, they should be consistent. What we mean here is let us look at paper A. Somewhere on page uh, 1 I believe, I do not, there was a sentence which is the objective of their study. They say that our goal was to establish that the electronic lab simulation could practice results, could produce results comparable to physical labs. 
Later when they, after they have done the, uh, they have analyzed the results, they have shown a table. In fact, in this case, the result is not very favorable uh, because they did get an improvement, but they are connecting it back and they are saying that the improvement cannot be attributed to the lab simulation only. So, they are actually making some connection here. Whether you get favorable results or not, whether you can say that your solution caused the results or not, you have to connect it back to the research questions and say, say what it is, whether it does, did it work or did it not work. Finally, let us look at an important item and this, what, what's, this is called the contribution of the paper that the authors claim. So, you may have a, a good idea, you may have a problem that you started solving, you may have a good idea and you did something, you may have done the evaluation. But in the, uh, at the end, what is it that others should take away from the paper? What is the important contribution to the entire field that you made? Again, paper A does that. Uh, the last paragraph says, tells the reader that after you read these studies, you will have an idea. So, that is implied here that these studies provide an indication that there exists a simulation that yields learning at least equivalent to physical labs. That was ex essentially their objective. Okay. So, what is important is that you need, you should be stating this very clearly and you should not make the reader search for this. Weak paper on the other hand does not have a clearly stated research contribution, even though there may be a contribution in terms of uh, teaching learning materials or in terms of effective teaching strategies, all these may be there. On the other hand, the research contribution may not be there very clearly. So, to summarize paper A and B, we go back to the very first session this morning and the goal was to go from ET practitioner to ET researcher. What we see is that paper B is still at the ET practitioner is still talking from the ET practitioner's perspective because they have developed a lot of lab materials. They may be effective, but they do not have any of the features that need to be present in a research paper. Paper B on the other hand has taken a teaching learning idea and has implemented the further steps to uh, uh, that will take it to an ET researcher perspective. I see a lot of chat messages which say that this last point seems to have been understood by all participants and that you got it before while solving uh, the worksheet. So, that is very good to see. Okay, so, let us talk about a few other things that must be there in a well written paper. This was not there in any of the items, but let us just go through them. That a well written paper should have a consistent flow, we will talk a lot more about this in the next few sessions. Each of the pieces, each of the aspects of the study must be connected to each other. And this is the final summary of the features that must be there in a strong paper. Again, we are repeating this often because it is very important. This is what you need to keep in mind when you do your own research study. So, until now, we looked at the, we looked at question 1 of the worksheet and your task was to self assess whether your answers matched and uh, it, to see if your reasons were similar to the ones given and so on. If you have done so, then it looks like you are on your way to becoming an ET researcher. You have taken the first step. There were some other questions in the worksheet. Which paper did a better job of analyzing prior work? Which paper and I see that all of you are already writing in the chat window that paper A was better in all of these. So, by now the answer should be very clear, but what is important, what you need to do is to think about the reasons that uh, because of which you gave the answer that paper A was better in terms of analyzing prior work, in terms of describing procedure and so on. So, when you get a new paper to analyze, you have to, you have to be able to answer these questions by looking at the features in the table. Okay, so, let us actually, this was supposed to be an activity which got moved to a homework assignment and then it got moved back to an activity. So, this is an activity that you will do right now.
you will start this activity right now and you will continue it over tea because we have from now until 4 pm to do this activity. You can continue your activity while drinking tea. It is an individual activity to begin with. So, by now you know all the features that must be present in a strong paper. The goal of this activity is to assess your own idea that you have submitted in the pre workshop assignment and check if your idea contains all the features in the activity. So, let me repeat this again because what we are now asking is take what you learnt while analyzing others papers and apply that those knowledge and skills to your own idea, the idea that you have already submitted in the pre workshop assignment. So, I will put up the table on this slide in a moment, but what there is one note I would like to make here. Uh, some of you at this point might have decided or might have con come to a conclusion that you do not want to work with the same idea that you did in the pre workshop assignment. So, this is the right time to change your idea if you would like, if you thought of a better idea while talking to your partner or if you got a better idea by looking at the examples in the morning, you can change your idea. So, if you think you want to work with a different or a better idea than what you submitted in the pre uh, workshop assignment, write your new idea first. If you want to work with the same idea that you did in the pre workshop assignment that is also fine. The reason I am repeating this is that the assignment that you will do from today evening onwards for the next coming week is also is an extension of the pre workshop assignment. So, you need to have your idea concretely in place before you leave the workshop today. Once you have your idea you can just do this in your notebooks and it is an individual activity. Self assess which of the features below is present in the idea that you submitted in the pre workshop assignment. The criteria for self assessment are given here and at this stage there is a there is a point that we need to make here. Your idea may not contain all the required features because last week when you uploaded the pre workshop assignment you had to just write an idea. This is ok, it is not because it and the reason it is ok is that you will work on incorporating all of these in the rest of the sessions today as well as over the coming week and on next Saturday. So, what you need to do is think of your idea, you may have it written in your notebooks or you might remember it and simply note down first whether the idea is present or not. If it is not present, think of what else you need to do in order to incorporate this feature, because each of these features now you know is essential to have in your idea. 